Revenge of the Nerds is comedy classic that is cringeworthy in today's world. When Revenge of the Nerds hit theaters in 1984, it was seen as a triumph for the underdogs. The film tapped into an emerging cultural shift, allowing nerds frequently bullied and marginalized to strike back against the jocks, the stereotypical bad guys. Audiences loved it. It was a comedy that empowered the weak to stand up against their tormentors and revel in payback. But watching Revenge of the Nerds through a modern lens reveals a wildly different picture, and the film's jokes and storylines don't hold up. What was once a fun romp, for many, now appears as a series of cringeworthy missteps, filled with egregious acts that feel not only problematic, but outright criminal. Ironically, in the journey from bullied to empowered, the heroes of Revenge of the Nerds cross ethical and legal lines time and again. From acts of sexual exploitation to criminal negligence, they commit actions that wouldn't just be frowned upon today, they'd land these characters in court. Even in the 80s, these were bold choices. But with the cultural shifts and heightened awareness of consent, privacy, and respect for personal boundaries, it's clear Revenge of the Nerds would be a non-starter in today's entertainment landscape. There are too many problematic jokes that don't age well. The most uncomfortable aspect of Revenge of the Nerds is that the characters we're supposed to root for are the ones engaging in deeply troubling acts. Some examples, Booger's disturbing comment. In one early scene, Booger expresses interest in visiting local high schools to find a date, blatantly referring to the search for jailbait. In today's climate, this joke wouldn't be tolerated, especially coming from a supposed protagonist hidden cameras, and non-consensual recordings. In a scheme to get back at a sorority, the nerds set up hidden cameras in the women's house, secretly recording them in private moments. Not only is this a gross invasion of privacy, but in many states today, it would be classified as felony revenge porn. The fundraiser with non-consensual photos. Later, the nerds profit off of these stolen images by selling them for a fundraiser, doubling down on the violation of consent. Watching this unfold as a comedy is unsettling, given how much this behavior echoes real-world cases that now face harsh legal consequences. Panty raid as trespassing and sexual battery. The infamous panty raid scene, meant to be comedic, would today be viewed as sexual battery and trespassing. The humor is darkened by the fact that these violations are perpetrated by the film's protagonists. Assault with liquid heat. The nerds exact revenge on the jocks by putting liquid heat in their jock straps, a move that may be framed as slapstick, but clearly crosses into assault territory. Exposing a minor to illegal activities, Wormser, a 15-year-old nerd, is not only pulled into all of this, but actively involved. In a modern film, exposing a minor to this level of inappropriate behavior would be seen as criminal negligence and exploitation. And then, there's perhaps the most notorious scene of all, Lewis pretending to be Betty's boyfriend. Under the guise of her boyfriend, Stan, Lewis has sex with Betty, who has no idea who he actually is. It's presented as a moment where the nerd wins, but the reality is clear. This is rape by deception. This scene is particularly shocking for today's audiences, highlighting just how desensitized past comedies were to ideas of consent. There are even more crimes that fly under the radar. While the protagonists commit much of the film's morally questionable acts, Revenge of the Nerds doesn't stop there. Numerous other scenes showcase behavior that today would be viewed as problematic, if not illegal. Insurance fraud and arson. In one scene, the jock's fraternity house catches on fire, and the football coach conspires with the police to engage in insurance fraud, a subplot that raises the stakes in ways the film never fully reckons with. Animal cruelty and bestiality jokes. Multiple scenes involving animal cruelty and jokes about bestiality add an uncomfortable layer to the movie's attempt at humor. Such moments would hardly pass as acceptable humor today. Hazing and underage drinking. Severe hazing rituals and blatant underage drinking are casually presented, with one scene showing a pledge tossed from a balcony, a moment that's played for laughs but would more likely result in serious repercussions today. Stereotyping and racism. The film's approach to diversity is also painfully dated. Characters are pigeonholed into stereotypes, from the exotic Asian nerd to over-the-top portrayals of gay characters. At a time when racial and sexual orientation-based jokes were common in film, Revenge of the Nerds leaned hard into the caricatures, but this approach is now seen as outdated, offensive, and bigoted. 
even the film's basic premise feels out of touch. It claims to uplift the nerds, but instead portrays them in a way that highlights their social ineptitude and willingness to exploit others. Nerd culture itself has evolved dramatically since the 80s, now widely celebrated and far removed from the desperate, ethically questionable revenge tactics these characters employ. Looking back and laughing, uncomfortably, it's still kind of funny. Watching Revenge of the Nerds today feels a bit like watching a crumbling artifact. Many will still find the film funny, but it's often through an uncomfortable lens. In a world more attuned to the concepts of consent, privacy, and respect, the jokes that once landed with audiences now come across as relics from a time of problematic social norms. Would a studio ever greenlight Revenge of the Nerds today? Almost certainly not. It's a film that both embodies and critiques the values of its time, a reminder of just how much the cultural landscape has shifted. The movie's legacy may survive for its place in film history, but its comedy will never land the same way.